Are you feeling the calling to start or grow a business that is so aligned with you and everything that makes up who you are? Do you know that there has to be a way to do this without so much hustle and without chasing the latest shiny objects, but you're just not sure how? You can definitely have a dream business that improves, not consumes your life, that allows you to work with soulmate clients while helping you and your family financially and in all ways. You can elevate yourself to be the entrepreneur who has all of her desires. I'm going to show you how on the Elevated Femmes Movement. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Elevated Femmes Movement. Today, I'm here with Hannah, Hannah Noel, is it yeah. Hannah? Hannah Noel, okay. <laughs> I should have asked you before we started. I was going to, and then I forgot. <laughs> but um, Hannah is a mom, she's a business owner, she... Um, she has a great, I guess, I guess I'll just say it's a tool, a tool for helping us live our lives more aligned in a more aligned way. And I think when I stumbled on it, it's something that really made a big difference in how I run my business and it's helped with like less frustrations and less um, impatience with seeing things happen and seeing things through. So um, Hannah, why don't you start by telling us a little bit more about you and what you do and um, how you help other business owners with your work? Yes, of course. Well, first of all, thank you for having me here. I always love being a guest on podcasts because it's just fun to connect with people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so thank you. <laughs> And yeah, I'm I'm Hannah. I am a mom. I have an 11 year old daughter, so we're in the, you know, the thick of preteen, <laughs> preteen <yep>. days. <laughs> um, I'm a single mom, which adds a fun layer to mm. that, um, especially being an entrepreneur. But yeah, I, I mean, as cliche as as it is, my business really stumbled into my lap. I knew, I always knew I wanted to be a business owner. I always wanted that flexibility that you can have in business. And unfortunately for a lot of business owners, their business like takes over their life. And so I ended up creating a business where I really am in control. I have the control. I don't, you know, I'm not like stressed about it, worried about it 24 seven, like a lot of traditional business owners. And, um, it really just popped into my lap. I started kind of helping single moms and coaching single moms through just like the, the mental side of it, you know, not so much the actual, like how to, anything. Yeah. <laughs> Just working through the emotional and mental struggles that come with that. Um, and then I kind of transitioned into a mindset coach because I didn't want to, I kind of, I started feeling like I was identifying as a single mom instead of as Hannah. So I wanted to separate myself a little bit from that. Um, I still work with a lot of single moms, but, uh, you know, it was important to me to be Hannah and not be the single mom. Um, and so then I was in mindset coaching and I realized with all of my clients, we were, everything that we were working on was for their business or the business they wanted to start or, you know, to change their mindset and get rid of limiting beliefs so they can have a better business. And so I realized eh, I'm actually a business coach helping women. And I realized what it was, was I was helping women get into alignment for themselves and in their business. So then that way, the limiting beliefs that popped up or the, the speed bumps that they encountered or the confusion that they had, they, you know, I, I was able to help them kind of get that back on track work through that, get in alignment and have a business that they're obsessed with and love. So, you know, that switch of choosing to call myself a business coach was actually a limiting belief that I had to work through because mm. I felt like I knew I wanted to be a business coach eventually. But in my mind, I was like, once I make six figures, once I hit this goal, once I whatever, then I can be a business coach. And I thought that would be, you know, a year or two away. So I, uh, I, I, I didn't do it. And then 
it occurred to me that I actually was a business coach, but I was just focusing on mindset and not focusing on strategy. And yeah, um, yeah. so anyway, that's how I got to where I am now. Yeah, <laughs> and, that's great. And, I think it's it's um it's such a great thing. I mean, you mentioned how you work with people really more in mindset, and I think a lot of times people um, when we start a business we straight away, we want to find the strategies. We want to find like the, um, that like, what's that magic pill that's going to help me, you know, land all the clients and, and do all the things that we want to do. And in reality, what I've found, and I've been in the online space now, I mean, as a coach, I've been in the online space for over four years, close to five, four and a half ish. Um, but what I've seen is that strategies really are not always the most important thing to focus on because you can choose a strategy that feels good to you. And if you are consistent with it, and if it like, if it's in alignment with who you are and what you want, it's going to work for you. I mean, it might not work out in a couple of months or even in one year, but it's eventually going to work. But the trickier thing is the mindset because our minds are so like, our brains are always trying to play tricks on us. And they're it's always trying to tell us, what we can do um, and, you know, what we can't get and what we can't achieve. So I feel like sometimes the mindset is, it's almost more important than like the strategy. It, it depends on the person, obviously, but like, it's, I think at some point in our lives and our, in our business entrepreneurial careers, I feel like everybody needs some kind of mindset support because we're human beings, right? So there's always going to be things that, we deal with that we need some support. We need to have that sounding board and the mentor to help us work it out. Yeah. So I I couldn't agree more. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I know that you, um, you know, you, well, first let's talk about this. So let's talk about how you, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but single mom and, you know, a mom to a preteen. I mean, that has got to be quite tricky sometimes. And even though you probably have systems in place and maybe you even have some team, I have a toddler and then I have a a seven-year-old. So my kids are a little bit younger, but still it's when they get sick, you know, that, (laughs) that derails the day, whatever I had on the agenda for that day, that always, you know, throws me for, you know, some interesting (laughs) stuff happening. So I guess if you could just touch on that, because we have listeners who are parents and I always like to hear how other parents, other moms, you know, kind of like handle their businesses as they're parenting, you know, especially little people. Yeah. (laughs) So yeah. What, what tips can you give us? Yeah. So there's a couple things that I always like to encourage parents. First of all, a lot of parents, especially moms feel guilt or shame when it comes to working you know, maybe when their kids are home or, um, you know, on the weekend or whatever, like they feel like they should be spending time with their kids. And I struggled with that for a really long time. And I wouldn't work when she was around because I felt like I was supposed to hang out with her because she was home and we have such limited time with our kids. Right. And so it came from a place of, shame, really. It came from a place of scarcity and it came from feeling like I was a bad mom if I worked while she was around. So my first tip is to just give yourself permission to work whenever you can, whenever you need to, whenever's best for you, even if that's when your kids are home, because your kids are going to see you, you know, you're modeling work ethic and you're modeling dedication and commitment and you're modeling that the things that are important to them, you know, the things that are going to be important to them in the future are worth going after are worth working towards by, you know, going after the things that you're passionate about. So that's my first tip. And then kind of on the flip side of that, still a part of the first tip, but kind of on the flip side of that is that if it's important to you to spend time with them, because you genuinely want to create that connection and genuinely, you know, want to really separate your work and your motherhood, that's perfectly okay too. The The goal in this and the purpose in this is to make sure that you are coming from a place of empowerment and not from a place of shame or guilt. 
So whatever makes you feel empowered, if that's modeling your work ethic or if that's modeling the connection, both of which are so valuable to kids then whatever is right for you. Like you had mentioned, you know, like even when it comes to strategy, um, yeah. same thing with motherhood, whatever's right for you is what you should do. And, you know, I've gone, I've done both. And now currently I intentionally choose to get my work done when she's at school or when she's talking to her friends or when she's, you know, watching TV because she wants that space. Like, I work around that because um, that's just what's important to me now. And then the second part of this is to also, I think it is so, so, so important to define success for us, what we view as being successful, because it's really easy to say that, you know, you're only successful if you achieve this income goal, or if you achieve this follower count, or this whatever, whatever statistic or whatever insight, analytic, it's really easy to make those things make you feel successful. Um, And especially if you're a projector in human design, which I know we're going to talk about, but for projectors, which I'm a projector, success is when we're like living most aligned, most authentically, when we feel successful. So this is important for everybody, but especially projectors. You have to define what success means for you because in those moments, say your kid gets sick, your kid gets hurt. The other day, my dog got attacked by my cat. So I had to take her to the ER vet (laughs) and, you know, I had to reschedule my appointments. And before I had defined success for me, that would have made me feel like a failure, you know, having to pick my daughter up early from school, or if she had to stay home and I had to reschedule stuff, that would have made me feel like a failure because I wasn't actively working in my business that day. Mm -hmm. Now, success to me is doing the best that I can, doing everything I can with the time, energy, and resources that I have. So I mean, I, and I say it often, sometimes the time, energy, and resources that I have is zero. And so I do nothing. And that day was a success. Yeah. And so for parents, for moms, when you know what success means to you and how you can, um, you know, track success for you, then it makes that aspect of that guilt or shame or the struggle of balance. It makes all of that so much easier because you get to decide when you're successful. Yes. I love that. And I'm such a big proponent in redefining success because I think for so long success had this um success and like income or like you said like vanity metrics even in the online space like that's what it was about like if you weren't hitting certain you know metrics or income levels then it was like oh well then I guess you're not really that successful and I love that you know you're you're stand like you're making a stand for also redefining that because we need more we need more female entrepreneurs doing that I think and sharing that it's okay to do nothing and sharing that you know what's right for you might not be right for me and what's right for me might not be right for you and that is okay we're all different and I think this kind of is a great segue for the next thing that I want to chat with you about which is human design and I teased a little bit in the beginning and I said that there, there's this tool that Hannah's going to talk to us a little bit more about. And um, yeah, Hannah, so why don't you tell us, give us like a brief intro to human design. Um, Cause I know that not everybody is familiar with, with <laughs> this, um, with the term and what it even means. So give us like the, you know, the third grade <laughs> definition of human design. <laughs> so human design is fascinating and it's, I think it was developed, if I remember correctly, in the 70s or 80s. So it's fairly new too. Um, but it is based on kind of a combination of astrology and the chakra system. So it's based purely on what time you were born, your birthplace, birth time, and birth um, date, actual birthday. And what's fascinating about it is you just put that information in and then a chart comes up and any of these places, I have like a, I have a link where you can get your chart and get the basic info. And then I send a little like mini summary on what it all means, but it's really just a a tool. Like you said, a resource to, you know, you look it up, you start looking at, I always suggest people start with the type and the authority, which we can 
briefly talk about, but those two things are a great starting point because those are things that are going to kind of make the most sense to you right away. There's a million other aspects of the chart. And I mean, you can, you could talk about, I mean, there are podcasts where it's only about human design because right. there's so much <laughs> to go into. Um, but it's just such a great tool to really learn how, how you've been designed. And for me, it, it affirmed so many things about me as a projector. I need a lot of rest. And up until I found out I was a projector, I just thought I was lazy because I ran out of energy and I needed to nap. And I thought I was lazy up until like 18 months ago when I, or like two years ago when I um, found human design. So yeah, it's just such a great tool to understand yourself, understand why things have happened in your life, how you can use those things to your benefit, um, how you can, you know, take your stories and take your, your life really and turn it into helping others, whether that's your kids or your family or clients, you know, as a business owner, I think it's just such a valuable tool to explore. Definitely. So I think I first heard of human design about two years ago, but I didn't really look up my, um, you know, what I am or anything like that until about a year ago. And then started kind of going into down the rabbit hole a little bit. Um, And there's still so much that I don't know. But what I do know is that I am a sacral generator. And when I found that out, it was like, oh, this makes so much sense. Um, And really one of the the main takeaways that I got from that is that I, I don't need to create anything. Like I don't need to reinvent the wheel basically. Like I can, like I am best at, and you can probably help me say this better, (laughs) Hannah, but like, I'm better at like keeping things going. And like, for example, um, taking a concept and talking about the concept and giving my, uh, my take on it, something like that. Um, and also like the, the sacral part of it is important because that is so true. Like I, I'm a highly intuitive person and don't always trust my intuition. Um, I've gotten way better at it, you know, with time and with work, but, um, again, that made so much sense to me. And it just kind of like, made me realize, you know what, even when I think I'm doing something wrong, it's for a reason. Like as long as I had that, like that, like gut reaction, like the gut feeling, um, it's even if it didn't really give me what I wanted, it's for a reason. So yeah. Um, is there anything else that you can share with us about, um, maybe like how you, how you work with, um, with clients and helping them use human design, anything yeah. that you can talk about, <laughs> about sure, human design. Sure. Really great. Yeah. So like I said, I, I like starting with the type and the authority. So that's exactly what you said. A generator is your type and sacral is your authority. And there's a million other aspects to human design that when I'm actually working with someone one-on-one, we explore. Um, But as a general starting point, our type is our energy type, the amount of energy that we have to go about the world. And this isn't necessarily like actual physical exerting energy, but this is more so our capacity to just do things in general, whether that's working or whether that's spending time with people, you know, like that takes energy out of us going to, you know going to someone's birthday party (laughs) or whatever, (laughs) just the capacity to do is the energy that I'm talking about. So generators and manifesting generators have the sacral defined. Sacral is one of our centers. And when it's defined, that means that you have the energy within you to, and to constantly be able to do stuff. If you want, you can tap into that at any point. It's like a car that has its engine on. At any point, you can hit the gas and start driving. Whereas projectors, reflectors, and manifestors do not have that sacral defined. And the sacral is the only one that has the unlimited energy available. So because we don't have that defined, our energy ebbs and flows. And what's beautiful about it is we can get a lot done in the time that we do have our, our energy on and we have access to that energy. Um, and we can get more energy by being surrounded by other generators. 
But then you have to be careful because if like for me, I have four generators in my life that I spend time with regularly. And if I'm with them too much, then I can feel stressed to do more. I can feel pressured to do more when I can't, I don't actually have the capacity to do more. Yeah. So if you have an undefined sacral, it's really important. So undefined sacral is projectors, manifestors, and reflectors. It's really important to um, spend a lot of alone time and kind of recharge your battery on your own. Practice some self-care, whatever that is for you. So that's that's the, the main point with the types. And then the authority I have a whole podcast episode on authority, so I won't go into each one, <laughs> but the authority is how we make decisions. Yeah. And there's seven different types. And on my, um, like a, on, I have a podcast episode about it and my Instagram, I have reels on each authority, but there's seven, they vary from needing to do things immediately, like having to make an immediate decision, which mm-hmm. is what I have to do. And it's, it's a subtle, quiet, gentle nudge called the splenic authority. And it's honestly really difficult sometimes, but it's fine. <laughs> um, but what I love about the authority is it empowers us to do what's right for us. And it allows us confidence and clarity in our decisions. And so it's, it's so much easier when you start to doubt yourself or when someone starts putting doubt in your, in your mind or in your brain, it makes it way easier for you to say, no, this is how I've literally been created to make this decision. Yeah. And it might not make sense to someone, especially for me as a splenic projector. Most of the decisions I make don't make any sense. There's no explanation, but it's just the answer. <laughs> <laughs> It's that way with, you know, all of the authorities. And so it's really empowering to know that you're doing what's best for you based on how you've literally like been created. And um, yeah, the uh, authorities is definitely where we get most in alignment. And that's something I really work closely with my clients on so that they have that confidence in their business. Awesome. Yes. And then of course there's the, um, the numbers, um, yes, the profiles. yeah, the profile numbers, um, there, there's just so much. So, um, Hannah, we will definitely ha- need to grab the link to your podcast episode so we can link it. And if people want to learn more about that, they can, they can listen, but, um, I guess before we wrap up here, is there anything else that you, that you want to say to like, to whoever's listening, like, um, as far as why you love using human design, like why do you, why is it something that is important to you to, to use in your everyday life pretty much? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So for me, there's a couple things. First of all, it empowered me to know that all my quirky behaviors and all the things that don't make sense are just a part of who I am. So my profile, one of them is the natural, which means that I'm just naturally good at things that I try. I don't have to try very hard to be good at it, which for my whole life, it made me feel like I was being inauthentic or something. Like it just made me feel like people were going to think I was like bragging if I was automatically just good at something. So that really empowered me to know like, no, I've just been designed to be able to be good at stuff. And like, that's a beautiful thing. Um, and so the profile is really powerful in that regard and all of it in, in general, it's just very encouraging and affirming and, you know, aligning just same thing with the projector. I thought I was lazy for all my life. And then I found out, no, that's how I'm designed. So using that is really encouraging because we can know these quirky things. If you're the kind of person that has a million ideas and you don't know what steps to take, you're probably a manifester because manifestors are the ones that initiate things. And that's perfectly okay. It doesn't mean you're indecisive. It doesn't mean, you know, that you're a mess. Like it just means that's how you are. Um, And then the other thing with human design is it's really awesome to use for your families and for your kids too. I love using it for my daughter. She's an emotional generator with a 1-3 profile. So she has that unlimited energy that she can tap into. So I'm able to create boundaries and kind of set up expectations with her because I don't have that energy. Um, and she's has the emotional aspect. So I know she, you know, really feels her feels. And then the one three profile means that she is the kind of person that needs to know an answer. Like it's like if I say maybe or I'll let you know or I'll think about it, that is very yeah. unsafe to her. Mm. That makes her anxious. And so 
now I know that just giving her an answer, even if I change my mind later, giving her an answer is what's going to bring the most comfort. Um, and then with her three line, it's, she lo- you know, she's a trial and error kind of person. She gets to try all the things she's going to fail. She's going to have a lot of successes and it's all part of her experience as a human. So in those ways, it's really awesome to be able to, you know, kind of adjust your parenting, I guess you could say, based on your kid's profile too. Yeah. I think one of the things that has helped me with, like you said, it has helped me kind of figure out and make sense of my quirks and why I like, I guess, act the way I do sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and and it, but it also helped me trust my intuition more because like, like I'm meant to do that. Like that's how I make my best decisions is by trusting my intuition and also how to get along with other people because it made so much sense once I started figuring out other people's profiles. And it's like, oh, that's why it's not, they're not just trying to drive me crazy. It's <laughs> just, that's just the way they're, they're designed. <laughs> so yes, thank you. I feel like there is so much more that we can chat about is. <laughs> when it comes to human design. Um, but thank you so much for just kind of opening up that door um, to whoever is listening or watching. And um Yes. Thank you so much. Let us know where people can follow you if they want to learn more about you and your work. Um, if there's anything coming up in your world. Yeah, absolutely. So I am on all social media as with Hannah Noel, and I'll make sure you have the link for that too, but it's Hannah without an H at the end and then Noel, like how you see at Christmas. And, um, that's my website. Also, I do one-on-one coaching. I do Voxer only one-on-one coaching. So I'm able to really use my energy as a projector. I I don't have unlimited access to energy. So I'm able to respond when I'm at my best. And um, I have a membership too, which is a rolling membership. You can join at any time. It's only $23 a month. And it's a community and coaching support membership, essentially. So I do a monthly hot seat coaching call. We're on that call as long as possible to get everybody's questions answered. Um, And then I do like text coaching, basically in the Facebook group where I'll answer whatever questions you have throughout the week. Um, And then I have guest experts as well. And I do a weekly training based on whatever is applicable to my business at the time I train on it. Um, And that's super fun. And that's a great way to have as a new entrepreneur, especially when you don't really have anybody else in your life that, you know, is cheering you on. I know that's something a lot of people struggle with is they have this big dream, but their loved ones are trying to protect them from disappointment. So they don't really encourage them. So this membership is a way to have that support um, and then get the coaching, obviously, too. It's like, it's a freaking great deal. And that was my splenic intuition that told me to do it. And so (laughs) I've done it and it's so much fun. (laughs) Amazing. And what is your podcast? My podcast is Just Like Magic. That is my spirituality-based business podcast. And then I have Untying the Knot, which I have with my friend Britt, and that's for single moms and divorcees. So... I have two podcasts. Amazing. Amazing. Very good. Um, Thank you so much, Hannah, for being on the show today. And um, make sure you follow her if you are looking to learn more about mindset in your business or human design. And thank you, Hannah. Thank you for listening to the show today. And we'll see you again next time. Thank you for listening to the Elevated Femmes Movement. I would love to hear your thoughts on the podcast, so please leave us a review. If you know someone who could benefit from the episodes on the show, please share it with them. We need more women elevating to their highest potential, enjoying all the great things in life, having plenty of time freedom for their children and loved ones, while doing things smarter and not harder and growing a business that improves, not consumes their life. To connect with me and download my free resources, please go to www.juliamhickman.com.